Uh, as a member of this committee, I rise to note the report and uh, draw your attention to, of course, the minister's uh, decision or his response to our recommendations and uh, my dismay that the minister did not agree with the recommendation. The committee does not come to these recommendations lightly. It is an all-party committee and we carefully examined the petition and we came up with a reasonable recommendation. And I think that all of us are extremely disappointed that the minister did not take it on board. It was not a costly recommendation either. All we said was, do the business case again. The evidence shows that that's, there is change, that some of the factors have changed since the original strategic review. Thank you very much, the Honorable Max Trenorden. Now, I just want to refresh your mind about what these petitioners were asking for. And I quote from the petition, they say that in determining to close the lines, the Barnett government failed to consider all of the road safety impacts, the economic impacts, the environmental impacts, and the social and amenity impacts of the line closures. And they are correct. And I see members who know nodding on the other side of the chamber. They, all they did was say, take another look at this decision-making process. And this is our job as the House of Review of this government, as elected members in the, in the Legislative Council, our job is to review decisions. And in this case, this committee did that very carefully. We called in, as you've heard from the Honorable Brian Ellis, three experts in this field heard evidence and said, yes, they have a case, take another look. And this is another case where the Barnett government's ministers have failed to take into consideration their constituency. They have been, and I dare to suggest, arrogant in this decision. The minister has failed. In fact, he's been invited by these petitioners to visit these roads to see how bad they are, and he has not accepted their invitation. How informed is he in making this decision? Secondly, we know that the um, uh, rolling stock has been replaced. We know that there's 22 locomotives that have been added. There are 574 wagons, and I haven't been so blessed as to have time to visit them, but I have looked at the photos that they've posted on their Facebook page. And I know that that, that great, gave great excitement to these Wheat Belt residents because they see that all of a sudden they too are going to get a piece of this pie from the mining boom. A piece of this resource um, in, income that's coming into this state is going to be spent in their area, and I think that was a good move. However, we failed them in the final analysis by closing Tier 3, by saying that roads can do as good a job as this rail, we have absolutely failed them. And they have every right to be disgruntled with their National Party elected representatives and with the Liberal government that, that now has the Minister for Transport is, is part of that party. And I know that they have undertaken just today, they've had a forum, and they are going to take this to the election, and this is going to be an issue that could have been avoided if they just looked at the business case through our recommendation was that the Wheat Belt Development Commission would take a look at this and do an economic assessment. And, and that was a great uh, suggestion on our part, I thought, and, and I thought that the minister has failed in his duty to not take that up. I want to just briefly look at those economic costs. The cost of upgrading this rail at, at the point that we looked at it is $93 million. $93 million. You members that are up north in the, and, and are seeing all these billions of dollars spent in mining infrastructure, what is $93 million to us as a state? That is an investment in our wheat infrastructure. 50% of our wheat is produced in this Quinana zone. 2,000 farmers, 2,000 farmers. 50% of the wheat is in that zone according to evidence before the committee. And if you have other evidence, uh, you are welcome to make a submission. Order members, order members, order members. Now, if, if I could just continue. The, um, 
The cost of the roads, if we looked at the maintenance that's going to be required to, to get these roads up to a safety standard so that, so that school buses and wheat trucks can be on the same road in safety, we are talking much more than $93 million. And that is a poor economic decision on the part of this government. A little bit of care, a little bit of consideration for this committee report could have avoided that. Now, the other problem that the minister seems to have is that he's not accepting that this cooperative is a grower cooperative. CBH is a grower cooperative. It is a nonprofit organization. This is not a company. This is not a profit-making company. This is not about privatization by private companies. This is about our growers working together cooperatively to get their product to the port. And I, as one West Australian, believe that they have a right to our taxpayer money in, in infrastructure to get their product to port, and we should have provided that in the Tier 3 lines. And the, um, the, other, the last point I want to make is that as a, um, as a member that's in one of those port cities, uh, we do not want to see any more freight being transported on road than necessary. In fact, we would like to see much more freight transported on rail. And the former Labor government took major <coughs> steps in increasing freight by rail because they, they were at least forward thinking about the impacts of trucks on our roads. And we now have a growing movement, uh, part of the uh, Wheat Belt Railway Retention Alliance that's been mentioned, includes the city of Fremantle, includes the city of East Fremantle. And I myself visited uh, the uh, mayors in uh, Rockingham and discussed this, and the mayors of Quinana, because I can tell you they are concerned, because CBH is, is in Rockingham, uh, the, the port where these trucks are gonna go is, is, goes through my South Metropolitan electorate. So we cannot, as city dwellers, think that this issue of uh, rail in the Wheat Belt is limited to uh, the, the good residents that are living in the Wheat Belt region. This is going to affect us all. It's going to force our, our wheat may be less economic because of these uh, transport costs that are going to go up. Now, I want to finish by saying that um, Something that uh, was presented to the committee is, is um, this. Tier 3 rail is, an, is as important for WA as the rail which runs from Mandra to Perth. And this particular submission says it's unlikely that city com commuters would form a cooperative and purchase trains to get to work. And I thought that was a great point of view because CBH and the growers should be applauded for their part in improving the efficiencies uh, by investing a considerable sum of their money into efficient rolling stock. We need to come to the party as, as public funds should be invested in this infrastructure in the same way that public funds are invested in other rail infrastructure in this state. Thank you.